What's up, Michael? How you doing?、Uh, welcome to the podcast. I'm glad to have you on. So please introduce yourself fully, because、uh, maybe me and the audience doesn't have a full picture of who ex- who exactly you are, what you do, and your journey, and how you got started with.、Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure if I should categorize you as a content creator. So please give us a true introduction of yourself. Thank you, bro. I'm super excited to be here on your podcast. Uh, super uh, high energy introduction. Always love to hear it. So, funny enough, I actually started in podcasting. So I got sent home from my university when COVID hit, and I was like, you know what? I want to build a better business podcast. All these business podcasts are hosted by kind of older people. Like, like where's like the content for the next generation of like young entrepreneurs and business leaders? <clears throat> so. I set out to do that, and I ended up interviewing the founders of companies like Quizlet, Kayak, Spikeball, Netflix, Grubhub,、um, so many different awesome companies. And I even interviewed the C-suite at major Fortune 500s like Chipotle, New York Times, Microsoft, etc. So it was a super awesome journey. And then I pivoted from the podcast into TikTok about a month and a half ago, which has been the craziest pivot ever. And we're really hitting a chord with our content right now. And while I no longer do a podcast, I'm a TikTok creator. The vision remains the same: to reinvent the way young people consume business content through a more energetic, more entertaining style, more swagger,、um, a younger and more driven voice, and to really kind of be. The next major business media brand for the next generation. So, kind of our aspirational goal is to become the Forbes magazine for Gen Z. Wow, very powerful mission. Love your mission, man. So, thank you.、Um, my question is,、hmm, you're doing lots of stuff, man. I love your ambition and everything. Thank you. Very powerful journey,、hmm. bro. Love the. By the way. First of all, I have to praise you for your thumbnails. It's <laughs> very outstanding and very creative. There's not a lot of people that are doing this kind of thumbnails, so love you on that. And how did you do? Like, first of all, the most simple, basic content creator like strategy. Where did you lie upon quantity versus quality? Yeah, so it's a one hundred percent quality over quantity, but we still have the quantity. The key is is both, right? A lot of people look at it as a, as a trade-off, but if you can nail both, that is the roots of a very successful and powerful media company. So we do one video per day at the highest quality we can, in the format that works for us. And there was actually a time a few weeks ago when I was doing two of these high-quality videos per day because I was right in that jet stream of growth, and we still are in that crazy jet stream. But I am a full-time student, so I've kind of stepped back. I brought on a video editor、um, who's managing the production now, so that's off my plate. I'm securing deals with major brands and companies to sponsor our content,、um, provide valuable products and services to our audiences,、uh, to our audience, and I'm training a team to really nail down the production process so we can build a really competitive business. That is extremely efficient, like a well-oiled machine. So I'm not looking at this like just some hobby. I'm looking at this as you know, building a really, really、um, well-oiled, well-dialed media company.、Mm-hmm. So currently, how many TikTok subscribers do you have? We just hit sixty-five thousand, and that's up from about six thousand followers at the start of August.、Mm-hmm. And it's it's only. The only social media platform that you post your content on? No, we also post to YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels. We've had quite little success with both those platforms, but we're starting to see some more growth there with some, you know, more learning and some partnerships with some bigger pages and whatnot on Instagram, for example. So, yeah, I'd really, really like to to grow those other platforms at the same level, or at least at a fraction of the same level as TikTok.、Mm-hmm. Um, YouTube Shorts have. Huge potential. It would depends on the titles, and I'm trying to not be lazy and try to be consistent on YouTube Shorts and try to lay the the titles down because I have s- I had some hits based only on the title, and I found that currently I found that、um, using big names in the titles, for example, 
for example, Yes Theory or like um, Jordan B. Peterson or for example, because I create some um, religion content, for example, God or Christianity, some big names, some like very controversial stuff mm. could help your videos do absolutely better, better because the first thing we, we see in, in the YouTube shorts is not a thumbnail. Very few, pe very few people use the thumbnail, even yeah. if it's possible. If it's, I don't know if it's even possible to use a thumbnail in the YouTube Shorts. So basically, all of us see the title. It all depends on the title, basically. So my next question is: Where are you finding the financial, the, the financial income to hire an editor? Are you doing other side hustles and stuff? So yeah, and to speak to your YouTube Shorts titling, I'm taking. I just took a note of that because the guy I have managing our YouTube Shorts needs to be including these names in the title. So that's actually something we should definitely be doing. So thank you for that. Um, we're trying to get that YouTube shorts to go better. So yeah, I've secured um, some really big brand deals in the past week um, from major brands because we have the highest, highest engaged business page on TikTok, um, highest consistency of any other business page. Uh, we don't have the most followers because we just started out, but we have the most aesthetic, most beautiful, um, most precise content. And um, I believe that's been a huge selling point to uh, potential sponsors who would like to reach the next generation with their products and services. Mm -hmm. So you're a team of how many right now currently? I have a video editor, kind of freelancer overseas. And I have three interns who stuck with me for quite a while now. One of them stuck with me for a year so, so far. The other one is stuck with me for nine months and the other one is stuck with me for about four and they're, they've all stuck with me unpaid. So I'm really excited to be building a business now because I can incentivize my teams in new ways and make them feel valued in new ways that I wasn't able to before. Uh, and then I also am just bringing on like a professional script writer. I found at my university is a very talented writer. So team of five right now. And um, I, I'd like to, to continue to reinvest my earnings in a team. Because what I've seen is a lot of content creators, they get these big ad deals and whatever, and they just pocket the cash. They don't treat it like a business. I'm going to take everything I make and reinvest it into my business to make it a bigger business. And I feel like that's not what a lot of content creators do. Mm -hmm. They just see this as a way to like make a bunch of money and throw ads up on their page and whatnot. But we're looking at it from a much more sophisticated perspective. We're looking at this revenue as a means to build a sustainable competitive advantage. We want to be the greatest business brand on social media, and it's going to take investing in our processes and in our people and growing our team and our technology to be able to do that. Yeah, love it. I'm sure the audience is as curious to know as I am about this, what I'm about to ask you now, but I find it really <laughs> fascinating that such a, no offense, small account on TikTok can have a member member of five, some of them even unpaid. Okay, I don't know if you're close friends to them or not. How did you get started even to like get a freelancer with such a small like following account? Did you make first a brand deal and then you hired your editor? How did this process start and about building your team? Like how did you find them? Did you find them in school? Were they your friends? How did, do you actually you actively reach out to brands, do brands reach out to you? How did this mm -hmm. process start of you building your team yeah. and finding people? Yeah, for sure. I think it's a lot of a question that a lot of entrepreneurs have. How could I find people to help me with my mission, right? Um, because no city is built with a one man, right? Mm -hmm. And it's often one person drives the construction of that city, but there needs to be other hands and, and legs right in the mix. So the, the thing about being a social media creator is your passion, your drive, and your mission is made clear every single day to new people. And when new people see that, if they like what you do, they might want to be involved and work on your brand. So by virtue of being a social media creator across many platforms, whether it be LinkedIn, our brands on you know various platforms, we're constantly being exposed to new people. It's not like we're building some app behind closed doors. We're building something that a lot of people can see and that by virtue is like recruiting people uh, without us trying to. Because like of that exposure. is because of the exposure of being a media, uh, being in media, right? 
So the people who work for me, um, I, it was either they found me and they DM me and they said, I want to work for our future, or I put out a posting on our existing social media channels um, to find someone to fill a certain duty, right? So the advantage of social media, people will come to you, but also you have a channel to ask people to come to you as well. Uh, freelancer I found through Upwork, which is a great platform. Um, and uh, it's, you get a lot of demand when you put out a job request. And um, the other guy was a referral through a friend, right? So a great way is just to ask your friends who they know, like who's the most driven, ambitious, ambitious person you know. And that's a great way to to uh, find people. Just ask one friend, just, just recommend me one person. Ask your 10 best friends, one person, recommend me one person. That's a piece of advice I got from a fellow founder um, in the social media and uh, app space. But uh, in terms of brand sponsors, I do all the outreach. So I pick my favorite favorite companies and I reach out to them and pitch my brand. And that's how it's been. And I, I was like five for five last week, which is crazy. Wow, very interesting. Two questions here. First of all, how do you convince your friends' friends to you work for you for free? And number two, how do you get, how do you reach out to brands? No, how do you convince the brands you reach out to to make a brand deal with you? What's the mindset behind yeah. it? If you can yep. give us a sneak Got peek be behind of your message, you send them behind the emails and stuff, how you structure it and stuff, that would mm -hmm. be perfect for the people watching. Sure. So, okay, the working for free thing is hard. It's really, really hard to get quality work out of people when they're not incentivized properly. And I've had so many people intern for me because they think this brand is cool, but most of them have just not done any work or have disappeared or weren't self-starters that I could depend on. Um, it is very difficult to build a team that is not paid. However, um, if you're building something of value and people can see that it's going somewhere and that you have a vision that you, and you, the founder are working every day on this, people will most certainly be willing to, to, to give some help. We've got this guy who's putting 150% of his life force into this, this company. I, I think I can put a few hours in a week to help him get there and get rewarded on the, on the end of the thing. Right. I think I, I prefer, I prefer to let my work speak for itself and my, for my personality to speak for itself, but to be clear, like, um, you know, I, I have a lot of passion and I'm very eloquent about commuting that communicating that passion. And I'm very, very good at making people feel valued and that, um, what we're building here is going to change the world. So if you're a visionary person and you have that ability, it's not hard to rally people around you. Now, if you're not naturally a charismatic visionary person, um, sell people with the thing that you're building. And it's not like you can't offer people equity down the line, right? Um, if people show value, you're of course going to give them a piece of the pie. People are working for you. So all of my interns are getting equity in the business. Say we get acquired by Spotify in three years for, you know, 50 million, they'd get a nice payoff. Right. Um, and now that I can pay, I can pay them for, for their work as well. So they're getting all the, that time spent working for free is getting made up with equity and all the work that they're putting in now will be, will be paid for mm -hmm. I used the to brand be. deals, mm -hmm. the brand deals. I'll just get to that super fast. Uh, the brand deals. So I reach out to these brands. I say, Hey, um, you know, I'm building this amazing business platform for young people. You know, my average video view is 150,000 and I've done 10 million views in the past, uh, three weeks. And I think a lot of brands are realizing the value of TikTok. A lot of brands have already sponsored creators on TikTok, So they have an understanding and if they haven't, they want to. So everybody wants to market on TikTok, and that's where I am because that's where like the next generation is, right? And everyone wants to, to find that Gen Z consumer. I also like throw in my own ideas. I'm like, hey, I love your product. This is how I can tell the story in one of my videos. Like I already give them a taste of what they'll get. I think that's good. I literally attach a screenshot of my analytics to just show people exactly what's going on. And now that I've already done my first brand, brand sponsor video, I just take the data of that performance of that campaign and I quote that in the the email. So not only do they have data based on what I can perform for them, uh, but I have an overview of my brand. And to be honest, man, people take one look at this page. They see the consistency and the crazy viewership. 
I have no, re- they have no reason not to to spawn to advertise with me. Mm-hmm. If Who else are they gonna go to? True. If if you didn't have the, um, the analytics on the previous like sponsorship, then that yep. would change the conversation. But still, they you're right. They they have a marketing Look, here team behind. You're them. you're they can know you're a hundred percent right. So my first sponsorship, I didn't get a good rate for because I didn't know my value. So I took a small rate, and I am going to do a great job with the campaign. But now that gives me data to pitch way bigger numbers, right? So if you're a content creator, you want to start monetizing through sponsorships, just just settle for a little, a little, over deliver. And then once you have some data, use that to price out your, Bro, you know, five to, five to 10x that. Five, I, I, five, I five to 10x my per video rate in like just after I, I did one video at a low rate. So it's like great way to start. Bro, that's a, that's, that's a win-win situation, man. There's no, people see it like short term, bro, you on the charge yourself, man. What in the world are you doing? But bro, yeah, only smart people would understand this from the beginning. You saw me like yeah. while you were talking, I'm like, bro, cool. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, data's good. These brands want data. They want data. They want to know what they can get. Mm-hmm. So are you now continuing with a podcast? So I paused the podcast, but I'm going to come back. So I'm going to bring it back once I have more media credibility. And um, yeah, I want like the craziest guests. Like I want Fortune 500 CEOs. Like I want CEOs to want to be on our future and be- because like the premium of the premium, like Zuckerberg's and Elon Musk's and whatever, Dave Portnoy and Mark Cuban, because this is the most premium business brand for the next generation. And they're not only going to look and sound amazing, but they're going to reach a new audience with their wisdom. And really, yeah, just because it's, it's, a, it's, it's the platform, right? It's, that's what I want it to be. So that's what I'm working towards, right? Building this really sweet brand through TikTok and then using TikTok and my brand deals and other forms of revenue, I guess, to, to finance my ambition to go back into podcasting in a much bigger way. Mm-hmm. Bro, I love this idea because of well, a few reasons. One of the reasons is because like sh- TikTok is so short, the, the, the video the video's length is so short that you cannot actually build like brand in there. You cannot build committed fans as you could build on podcasts, on long form content because the, the brand building you can build on YouTube and podcasting, the audio version on Spotify and stuff is uncomparable to what you can build on TikTok. And I think we saw this with the TikTokers boxing fight because there, were, there weren't good conversion rates. But because like Logan Boy and Jake Poo, okay, of course, they're better marketers. They can speak better and they can convince an audience better. But because they have a big audience also on YouTube, committed fans because of the much bigger video length and better brand building, there's high conversion rate on YouTube. So I love mm-hmm. what you're trying to do there. I want to be on YouTube, man. That's I want to be on YouTube. So that's where I can really show who I am instead of just being a, a quick creator. Bro, just a fun question. Uh, this may be controversial, but isn't Dave <laughs> Portnoy overrated? Well, I might say that because my girlfriend saw him this weekend because he was here at Michigan and she was taking photos with him. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to be the next I want to be the next Dave Portnoy of business. So, you know, I whatever. Bro, okay. Yeah, I mean he's a beast. I mean he's he's a, he's an absolute legend. I made a video on him. That's why he's up there. He's a he's a beast. Is he overrated? I mean, I guess he just gets to spout what he wants because he grinded and hustled for so long to build the brand he did. It's kind of I'm not a huge fan of their content though. Like I don't consume any barstool content because I'm a business kid. I'm an intellectually curious business nerd, so I don't consume their content. I think it's kind of diarrhea. But, and he sold sex and he sold sex. Like that's how he got big. He sold sex. He put naked girls on the you know, covers magazine. What have you, man. Um, you're, but he did an incredible job from a stuff? business perspective. No, I'm not against selling sex. Um, but like 
I think it's more difficult to build uh, an intellectual brand than uh, a clickbait, you know, um, kind of general interest, you know, for the average drunk sports fan. Yeah, true. Bro, I, all I know about Dave Portnoy is he just like goes around and tries pizza and he's the pizza testing guy. Do yeah, you know, well, he can. That, that's all he does. So he just basically has a show where he tries. Pizza. But no, he built bars. Well, he built Barstool from scratch. Like he built one of the biggest media companies from scratch. Okay, I would love to know how he did that, by the way, because that's amazing. So I made I made Yeah, I made a video on it. So essentially he would drive around in an old van and he would hand out his newspaper to people getting off the commuter trains. And um, he did that. And then he ended up like hiring homeless people to give them out. And then he started hiring girls to give them out and the girls giving them out worked the best. So he kept doing that. And then he started putting a girl on the cover. And then what he did was he would pretend he had competitors sponsoring his brand, even though they weren't. And then he'd, he'd get the other brand to like buy an ad with him. He'd make up fake ads and make it look like he was bigger than he was. So he was super scrappy, like entrepreneurship 101. So I definitely think he deserves to be able to walk around and eat pizza and be the man because he, uh, he built it over the past, you know, 20 years into a media brand that nobody has been able to emulate, like really insane brand. So yeah. much, so much different content, so much different content. It's very iconic, mm. amazing bro, lifestyle brand. Bro, it's very hard to build like a very big company and actually keep it successful for that long. Yeah. But it's even harder to build a successful, successful, sustaining company without the the scrappy beginning without what Dave Portnoy did, like fully like, um, let's call it controversial free or like totally legal, not like faking ads and stuff. You know, that's even much harder to do that. I, I have mad respect. It's, it's also really hard to build a media brand. Like he had to raise so much money from investors to like get to where he is now. And he's still worth a hundred million, which is amazing. And the brand is worth a ton, but like, yeah, he had to raise a lot of money, um, dilute his brand because dude, like media is such a hard business. Like everybody wants to be in it because it's the most fun and sexy of all the industries, but it's a really tough industry to make money. Like everyone wants to be in it because it's so cool, but like, it's just a really hard industry to make money in at a, ma at a brand level, you know, Bro, like at a massive scale. You know what? I have a theory. I could be wrong here. Right? If I'm wrong, please disagree with me. Please share your opinion and stuff. But the only reason why people think that influencers are so cool and stuff is because that's their job. <laughs> I mean, that's their job to look cool, to have fun, to entertain you. It doesn't look at right. be behind the end. Like, okay, Logan Paul like puts, no, no. David Dobrik puts out a vlog four minutes and 21 seconds, but he filmed lots of tens of hours of footage just to get to that four minutes and 21 seconds per week. He he had days where he was working so consistently to do that. He had days where he felt like giving up. It's very hard for him just to look like that four minutes on that camera. Ah, oh, bro, I'm having fun. Ha 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 ha. And change the scene and stuff. Is there yeah, no one sees the behind the scenes. I mean, that's why I'm inviting people to follow my Instagram to see how I'm building this company. Um, but yeah, nobody sees the behind the scenes on TikTok and see this really polished story, but there's a lot of effort, hard work, filming, editing, delegation that goes on behind the scenes to this 30 second video it takes, you know, multiple, multiple hours, if not, you know, six to 10 hours to, to complete. Right. Yeah. No one sees it. No one sees the hard work mm -hmm. and it's hard to make money. Off. Of course. And that's, that's giving it away for free to, to make this one of the biggest like media companies in the world is extremely hard and on top of that is not only creating content it's only it's also creating successful content so you have to improve your skills constantly and to be constantly ahead of the competition so you need to on top of that learn and create content so it takes a significant amount of work to do that stuff mm -hmm. it's it's a it's insane it's an extremely labor-intensive industry that doesn't scale with uh like other types of businesses you need a lot of people <laughs> Uh, to scale a media brand and uh, the biggest expense is humans, right? Like the most expensive cost of any other business is it's, it's always humans. So, you know, it's, um, it's my passion. That's why I'm doing it. And um, 
that's what content creators do. They create what they're passionate about and they, they work to, 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 to make content around what they love, love educating other people about what they love to do and showing other people what they love to do. And I'm in that boat. Um, I just want to build more of a brand instead of be an influencer. I want to build a brand. Like I want to be, I want our future to be a brand instead of like Michael Sakand. I'm not really into that. I'd rather be kind of the founder and the CEO, but this is a brand that goes beyond just one personality. I'd like to open that up. What do you mean by exactly by a brand? Because people have different definitions about what a brand is. <clears throat> yeah. So by brand, I mean an umbrella. So I might do my TikToks, but we might bring on another news, some kind of reporter to do the news on TikTok, right? We might bring on a special segment brought to you by a crypto researcher. So by doing a brand, you can diversify your product uh, instead of limiting yourself. So it's no different than, you know, Heinz, right? Heinz, you know, Heinz, the ketchup company. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, or we could do like, um, yeah, we do Heinz, right? Like they're not Heinz ketchup. It's Kraft Heinz, actually. It's Kraft Heinz. They're not Heinz ketchup. Um, they're, they're Heinz. And they have mayo and mustard and all that. So if I was just Michael Sakand, I could only be Michael Sakand. But if I'm our future, this can go so beyond just one, one guy. And that's what I'm excited about doing, even if it's just me in the short term. Because, yeah, that's how, that's how it works, right? Mm -hmm. You just start with you start with yourself, and then you work from there. Just like Portnoy was the only one who wrote his newspaper at the beginning. Yeah, I get it, and and I love that because it's so important to build a brand. Because when you stick to one thing and that fails, where now? Like you you gotta start from the beginning. That's why I'm telling my that other people that are business owners or like influencers. I'm like, bro, you gotta diversify. I love that that this one type of like, for example, content A is working, but you gotta tr start trying content B. Yes. To see if that's working. Yes. And plus, I would love for you to add your personality in your content so people start to follow you also for your personality. So when you, for example, one day you don't want to post business content and you've built like a community and the audience that follows you also for you, the conversion rate is higher than if you didn't show your personality and stuff. Instead of like just following um, content A, without testing content B, then if content A fails for, for their reason, because obviously you don't know everything about it, they're going to start from the beginning and start trying to find content B. While you have the opportunity mm -hmm. now, try content B mm -hmm. also. You don't lose anything. I love that perspective. Yeah, I'm using content A to get to content B, C, D, E, F, G. And that's what all creators have to do. You have to figure out what works and what's going to make you money. And then how can you take that minimum viable product and uh, use it to expand and diversify your reach, just like any other startup. Um, the last question that I have is for, I feel like a very good idea that you should start doing that maybe you, you could agree with me is that for example, when you're doing like, for example, Dave Portnoy or like Elon Musk, you can do like Elon Musk part two. For example, mm. you can continue on the, on the influencers that, that, that are working and do part two, part three. Because once you see like something is working, then capitalize on that. What do you think? Hmm. I think that's good. I've been doing that a little bit. So I started a series like called the richest person in every state. And that's done really well across both videos. And I need to make sure I'm doing one of those a week. Um, there's been other like kind of the inklings of series ideas that are great. Um, so yeah, the billionaire series is kind of our first part one, part two series. Mm -hmm. um, and we're definitely going to continue with that and maybe start some, some other ones. Right now, our story, our, our series are unofficial. So we have like this, this brand is genius, right? That's a series, but it's not part one, part two, part three. Um, it's, it's not labeled like that, but I understand the value of labeling it like that because then people will go back and look through, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I do like to treat all of our content as unique and evergreen and um, people will see the parallels, even if they're not immediately abundantly clear. I also don't want to put numbers on my thumbnails. So I don't yeah. know. How do you determine, back to the one of the first questions that I asked you, <clears throat> how do you determine quality and how do you determine quantity? Because for each person, everyone defines quantity and quality different. For example, me, quantity is like two or three times per day. For you, quantity and quality could be different. So how do you define each one? And how, and, and how do you make sure you catch up to that quality? When do you know when you're editing a video that, okay, this is good enough for me to post? Mm-hmm. 
I, I mean, I'm a perfectionist in all parts of life, to be honest, or most parts of life. So I, I really do, I really do will not post something unless I'm in love with it. So that's the thing. Like if, unless this passes my bar as the founder and the one who used to edit all the videos in the first place, then I'm good with it. The new video editor is getting better every day and he's absolutely phenomenal. So amazing that I have him. Um, the, the flip side is, uh, with quantity, you, you want to post as much as you can every day, as long as you can post tomorrow. Now our content takes a long time to create. It's very labor intensive, which means our optimal range right now is one video per day. Do I wish it was at two or three? Of course, but I don't have the capabilities of that yet. And that's what I'm working towards. Right. Um, so you have to understand your, your capabilities because you never want to miss a day. The algorithm loves when you post every day. And that's why TikTok, I think, appreciates my content now as I, I haven't missed a day, maybe missed two days in the past month and a half or maybe three days. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, and you think they're rewarding you on this or just like. Yeah, they do. They definitely reward you based on how much you post, how consistently you post. And it's also you just have to be consistent. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a factor. How, how do every you, single day. How do you discover this? Uh, just hearing different podcasts with major creators and it makes sense, right? If this person's posting on your platform every single day, you're going to reward them with views. Yeah. Uh, are you She's sure like Gary V. Not the momentum from audiences? Um, I don't know. I, I, I know I'm very certain that it plays a factor and it's not the most factor. The highest factor is shares, watch time, comments, then comments, likes, mm -hmm. and then there, there's definitely a factor of, of how much and how consistently you post. Mm -hmm. I've heard this from Gary V. I've heard this from Frank Michael Smith. Um, the, the sports guy, I've heard this from, um, a few other podcasts I've listened to. So I stand by that statement, mm -hmm. Perfect. but you know, some people can look it up. Thank you, Michael, for coming on.